So next up, we have, uh, to finish us off, it's Guy Davidson, Abstraction by the Rule of Ten. Over hello, to you. everyone. Oh, can I start? Right, hello, everyone. Uh, abstraction by the Rule of Ten, good evening. This is you saying good evening, Guy. How many dots on this slide? Lovely. How many dots on this one? How many dots on this one? It's getting harder now, isn't it? We're good at recognising up to eight to ten things. After that, the cognitive load becomes distracting and you're trying to make sure you have everything in mind before you proceed to the detail of comprehending the totality. So how does this impact your code? Sometimes things get too big to understand. There are too many things going on to apprehend in one glance. And this is important. When you look at some code, you want to minimise the cognitive load of actually understanding it. If seeing it all simply gets in the way, then you have friction. C++ has a number of abstraction mechanisms to assist with this. Think of them like powers of 10. Our first two abstraction mechanisms are the object and the function. Objects abstract the content of memory to identifiers. Functions also abstract the content of memory to identifiers as well. The first is for state, whilst the second is for execution. So look at this function. It's a lovely function, isn't it? It has lots of state and lots of execution. But did it start off like this? No, it started off like this. Then little by little it grew. How should we split it up? Well, multiple functions, part one and part two. But we need better identifiers. Finding those identifiers often stops us from dividing something. Or we can group bits of interacting state together and form our next abstraction, the class. All the data that interacts together can live in the private interface, and all the code that schedules that interaction can go in the public interface. Of course, a class can get large. Look at this interface. What does it do? This function interacts with these member data, and this function interacts with these member data. This function interacts with these member data, while well, this function interacts with these member data. This function interacts with these member data, and this function, the lines. The many angled ones, they are writing a bay Cthulhu, a bay Cthulhu. How do we reduce the cognitive load? We divide again. We have a couple of dozen things we can do with this class. Divide it into two, divide it into more, make it smaller, make it do less, separate the concerns, divide and conquer by naming. Hands up who thinks naming is easy? None of you have raised your hands. I didn't think so. Identifying, identifying is easy. But naming is hard. But we need to find a name for these things or we will end up with a giant and incomprehensible interface. More than 10 functions on your API. Too big? Divide it and give it two new names. Three abstraction mechanisms so far, the object, the function, and the class. The namespace is the next one to think about. There we are, lovely. A bunch of classes in a namespace. But we still have all these classes in a single namespace. What should we do? Nest the namespace like this. That's better. Now we have a few nested namespaces. But is this really a separate abstraction mechanism? No. Namespace is instantiation and access level, really. So I'm going to set that one aside and consider modules instead. Fresh for C20. The module is the next level of abstraction. It allows us to group declarations together into a single place and separate the implementation details away from the client. A module contains a whole bunch of classes, hiding away a whole pile of functions and data. And at this point in the talk a while ago, I would have started talking about include files, but this is the new age of wonder. So am I saying that modules should contain no more than 10 classes? Classes should contain no more than 10 member functions and 10 member data. Functions should contain no more than 10 lines and 10 objects. But what I am saying is that at some point, you need to start thinking about increasing the resolution of your abstraction. And that point is when you have 10 things to think about. 20 member data in your class, okay? If you can identify it all at a glance, then that's great. But at least think about it. The number of things is not directly related to comprehensibility, but it is a contributing factor that is easy to measure simply by counting. 10 variables in your function. Divide your function into two, or group your data into a class. 10 functions in your class divide into two classes. 10 classes, use a namespace to collect more strongly related classes together, or better still, use a module to identify a blob of functionality. And that is abstraction by the rule of 10. Come on, Pete. Where are you? Right, there you are. Come on, come on, come on, come on. <laughs> well done. Thank you very much, Guy. Uh, I got distracted because my dog decided to join in the talk. This is the kind of thing that never happens on stage at an ACCU conference. 
So since we're talking animals, why do milking stools have only three legs? Because the cow has the other. <laughs> 